Welcome to Write With Love. I'm your host, Sarah Williams, best-selling author, speaker, and creative entrepreneur. Each week, I chat to passionate and inspiring authors about their journey in creative writing. Some are traditionally published, some do it themselves. Everyone's journey is different, and everyone has something interesting to say. We all love love and love what we do. Today's show is brought to you by our amazing fans and supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the show and get some awesome bonus episodes, go to patreon.com forward slash Sarah Williams author to learn more. Now here's today's show. G'day and welcome to Write With Love. Today on the show, I'm chatting to fellow Queenslander and romance author, Charlotte Nash. Thanks for joining me today. Hello. Thanks for having me, Sarah. (laughs) No worries. So it's a pleasure to have you today. I'm a big fan and I've read all your books and I love them. (laughs) So I'd love if you could just tell us all about yourself and your writing journey so far. Right. Well, uh, my sixth book is now out and I've actually... I've been writing seriously now for, I think, 12 years, 10 or 12 years, and uh, it doesn't feel like that long. And so I wasn't one of those people that knew they wanted to be a writer from an early age. You know, I, I did dabble and I wrote pretty terrible poetry when I was a teenager and probably started a book or two at uni, but I never knew what I was doing. And it never connected for me that people write books as a serious thing and do it for a living and, you know, as a job. And um, that, even though I would go into bookshops and look at books and go, oh, wouldn't it be amazing to have a book published? (laughs) I don't know why those two thoughts never met. But many years later, um, after I'd been through a couple of sort of big technical degrees, because I I did engineering, I did medicine, and um, I thought that I would become a technical writer. I had sort of realised that I liked writing And so I thought I'd put the two things together. So I went back to uni to upskill a little bit in the the editing side of things um, with technical writing being my goal. But I happened to land the first time in a subject that was all about creative writing. And I just, and I had the, probably the only epiphany I've ever had in my life where I was like, oh, people write books, like actual people like me. And uh, that was 2007. And uh, since then, I've been writing seriously. And it took a few years to get anything published um, and a little bit longer to get my first book published. Um, But since then, it's sort of been steadily, steadily. um, So now that book six is um, just, well, it's out today as we're talking, but it will be last week by the time this goes (laughs) to to the podcast. Um, And I've got probably another six or seven manuscripts in my drawer. Uh, and that's sort of been a, a slow and steady journey through that, those 10 or 12 years now. Yeah, brilliant. So when you were starting to finish manuscripts, did you, yeah. you know, did you do a lot of online study or you did this university degree? Did you keep going with that? Yeah, well, I, uh, the course that I did was at the University of Queensland and it was uh, a broad kind of course in writing, editing and publishing. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, But to actually write novels, I did courses through Queensland Writers' Centre predominantly. Mm. And then after, so they have uh, this thing called Year of the Novel and Year of the Edit. And that was where I wrote my first novel manuscript and then edited that manuscript. And that manuscript's never going anywhere. (laughs) You know, I, I was so ambitious beyond my skills. But it proved to me that I could finish something um, and that I could edit and um, so from then it's been a lot of sort of ad hoc professional learning but most of the time it's been workshops at conferences or those kinds of things through Queensland Writers Centre Um, so from all different parts Uh, I think for the practical things of writing for a professional writer those things are always better for me than than tertiary education Mm -hmm. courses um, so yeah, that's where I principally learned. Yeah, brilliant. And big shout out to the Queensland Writers Centre. I love them. They're yeah. Absolutely fantastic. New, yeah, no, new people wonderful. there too, and they're really wonderful. So yay them. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that's fantastic. So what was the book that you finished that you... The first one. Yeah, your first one. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a science fiction novel called <laughs> The Q Line, which I just thought was such a 
a wonderful title. Um, and it was kind of about uh, these characters who lived in a post-apocalyptic world after a quantum event. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> which, you know, it, it just... It just demonstrates how I didn't have a really good concept of what a plot was and how to put this whole thing together. Yeah. But I did really like the world that it was set in. And I, a couple of years later, actually wrote a, a short story that was a prequel to the novel and set in the same world. And I had a lot more um, clarity around what I was doing. So that short story was actually published. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, so it's possible that I could go back and completely rewrite the novel one day, but I'd have to start from scratch. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I wrote uh, I wrote an historical fantasy that was set in the Iron Age in Britain that had dragons. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, I still have a lot of affection for that story, but again, it needs it wasn't as bad as the first one, but it needs pulling apart and putting back together. Yeah. And then I wrote a an urban fantasy romance that was called The Butterfly Blade Ooh. and had vampires and werewolves <laughs> and things in it, as a lot of things did at that time. <laughs> Um, and then it was the next book that I wrote, which turned into Riders Ridge, my first published novel. Um, and I actually wrote that, which is a completely different genre, yeah. um, because I started out in speculative fiction. But I wrote it in part, well, in large part, because of the Brisbane flood. Um, so that was sort of a literal watershed mm. uh, in where I was sort of going with my writing at that time. Yeah, wow. I was going to say, from going from speculative fiction to rural romance, <laughs> that's a big change. Yeah. <laughs> you still write both. I mean, that's the thing mm. is that the, the writing skills, um, I've always been that person who had those two different sides together. You know, when I was in high school, I was doing physics and chemistry and maths at the same time that I was doing art and ancient history. And those I've always had those two things together. But they don't play well as, you know, as, as you don't write the same name yeah. under those. And so um, I have continued to write both, but I very much stuck to the short stories in the spec fic and then the long form in the the more the romantic dramas and the romances yeah yeah absolutely oh that's so cool so your rural romance or yes. um, the americans might know it as western romance we always call it rural romance in australia yeah, or small town romance <laughs> small depending, town. On, yeah, depending on where you're from yeah <laughs> that's it so you've got writer's ridge which was your first yep. um eye injunction and crystal creek yeah so, so that that's writer's right. ridge yep and Iron Junction, Ooh, back a bit. Yeah. And um, and Crystal Creek. Yes, these were the first three. Yeah. There we go. Brilliant. Yes. So how are they linked together? Right. Yeah. So they they can be read as standalone. Mm -hmm. So it's not an obligatory. You must read them in a series. But my two protagonists from the first novel. So there's Daniela, who's my heroine, and there's uh, Mark, who is um, uh, the the hero. It's each of their brothers become the, the heroes of the next two books. Mm -hmm. So Iron Junction is Mark's brother, Will, and then um, Crystal Creek is Daniela's brother, Aiden. Um, and so that's how they're sort of linked together. And in time order um, of the events happening is the order of the books. Yeah. But depending, because the stories stand so far apart, um, if you haven't read them, you just don't get the little references that are yeah. in there. But yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's fantastic. Cool. Yeah. So cr country, we're thinking there's horses, there's outback, yep, that sort so of fun there's, stuff. There's, yep. So, um, and depending on where they are, so Riders is north uh, west Queensland. Yep. So there's cattle farming and there's horses in there. Um, Iron Junction is in the Pilbara. So uh, not so many horses in there, but a lot of sort of uh, FIFO lifestyle and the just the spectacular country of the Pilbara, how yeah. gorgeous it is out there. And so, so that's in bit, Western Australia. So, yeah, Western yep. Australia and sort of cyclones and that sort of thing. <laughs> and then Crystal Creek is Townsville. So there's, um, there's the actual Crystal Creek, which is just north of Townsville, does feature in it. But there's also uh, a wedding in it. So they go to west uh, to Western Queensland for that. And... Um, and that's also a military romance because the Aiden is in the army. Yes. So, um, yeah, 
So there's it moves around the country a little bit, but sort of connected through family. Yeah, and ironically, that's the first one that I read because I used to live oh, in really? Townsville. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I was in Townsville for 10 years up until about a year ago. And um, yeah, I remember seeing that one. And up until that point, Townsville like never got mentioned in a book. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, and then of course, I've written my book, which has a lot to do in Townsville as well. So it's yeah, like yeah, putting it's Townsville on the map. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, Townsville. <laughs> I, I've, I've never lived there, but I had um, I had friends who lived there, and yeah. so I was, and, and who were obviously posted to the army base, yeah. which is sort of where I was getting a lot of my details from. Um, and I transposed some of my working experiences as a medical student at the army base here in Brisbane, mm. and I just sort of transposed them into the the um, the. The Townsville setting. Yeah, so, no, I remember well, reading it going, wow, Charlotte, she must be from Townsville. She's getting so much right. <laughs> I spent time there. I did go there on a dedicated research trip and, and spend time there and actually go to Crystal Creek, which was amazing. Yeah, beautiful, it is. beautiful part of the world. Yeah. It is, yeah. we got to love this being able to travel for our craft day. Eh? I'm going to Byron Bay this no. weekend. What a shame. What a long oh, way to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll get to that with the later books because that was the, an even bigger thing with yes. them. But yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, oh, cool. And, and then, of course, you know, I, I should mention mm. that my the book that came after these ones, The Horseman, yes. which is also, you know, a rural or small town romance, it's not connected yeah. to the first three in any way, but it's the Victorian high country, yeah. which I think for me it's actually one of the, the ones that was the most personal because I was a big horsey girl mm. when I was a kid and... I have all these things in my childhood memory, like about the Man from Snow River and the Elaine Mitchell Silver Brumby books, and that's yeah. all set in that area of the, the high country. And so that's what was in my mind. It's sort of almost an homage to, you know, Jim Craig and the whole um, Man from Snow River. Uh, so that that one is really close to my heart. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Cool. So, and then you've gone on. So the last two kind of books that you wrote, they're not yes. as much the rural romance as they are more romantic drama or popular fiction. We're trying yes. to avoid saying women's fiction because let's face <laughs> it, that's sexist. So, <laughs> so we've got Saving You, which is your most recent, and I'll get you to tell us all about in a sec. Yep. yep. And the Paris Wedding. Tell us about the Paris Wedding first off. <laughs> Wedding is almost like a little bit of a crossover between the two because we do start out in country New South Wales. Mm. So the heroine of the story, um, Rachel, she she lives near Parks um, in in Western New South Wales. Yeah. And Parks is where, if, if nobody's familiar with Parks, it's where the the big Elvis festival happens every January. <laughs> that's just gone. Yeah. Um, and the, it's also famous for the big radio telescope dish that's there, which was sort of made famous by the Australian film The Dish, yeah. which I have to say is one of my favourite films of all time. <laughs> I just absolutely love it. Um, so we do start there, and uh, she is a, a woman who sort of sacrificed her youth you know, to look after her mother who was very ill. And the story opens, and, and as a result of that, she ends up giving up being with um, the love of her life, um, who is Matthew. And um, when the story opens, her mother's just passed away, and so she's, it, it opens at a time when she's really lost with her life. Um, and then this invitation arrives to Matthew's wedding to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but it's in Paris. And he's sort of moved a long way away from... Mm -hmm you know, where she sort of last, you know, connected with him. And so the story is really about her ending up going to this wedding with the idea that she's going to um, use it as a way to move on. But a lot of complications arise and, uh, and the story is about her sort of moving through all of those and then coming to terms with how life is. Mm. But it's very much a story about her. Yeah. Um, so it's different to my earlier books in the sense that it's not a romance story of a couple mm. and how they meet and how they then end up together. Uh, it's It has a romantic subplot, I guess, but yeah. it's really about Rachel's journey. Yeah, no, fantastic. No, no, absolutely great book. I loved it. Very well oh, done. thank you so much. <laughs> and so, I did go to Paris to read Oh, there you go. <laughs> With a one-year-old. Not quite so romantic no, now. Definitely. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, fantastic. Okay, so Saving You, that's the latest yep. one. So I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but I love the cover. It's Is that a little it's balloon? It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the, the cover was done by uh, Krista Moffat of Christabella Designs, and mm. she's so incredibly talented. Um, I think she also did the cover for the inaugural meeting of the Fervell Ladies Book Club, oh, wow. which actually I think was nominated or won one of the ABIA Awards for book covers last year. Mm. So she's incredibly talented, and I think um, she's really nailed the feeling of the book in what she's done. So yeah. I think that's absolutely amazing it's it getting so much great feedback yeah so tell um, us about it i want to know more <laughs> right so so this is a, like the paris wedding this is a story about um a woman um mallory cook who's who's pretty young you know she's she's only 24 at the time when the story happens but she's that character who had to grow up really fast because of um you know her life so Straight out of school, she married a man who was going places and had all of these dreams and sort of supported him. Mm -hmm. And then they have a, a young, they have a child very quickly. And so she has this five-year-old son and she's in the aged care industry. And she's very enthusiastic, but also, you know, a bit naive about how things go. Mm -hmm. And um, as a massive surprise to her, but maybe not to everybody else, um, her husband, about a year before the story starts, has suddenly kind of up sticks and left her um, because his business has taken off overseas. So when, when the story opens, she's sort of in this situation where she's hopeful of a reconciliation, um, but then pretty quickly things um, disintegrate because her son's been on a visit and then he doesn't come home. And so this, the story starts as this sort of, horrible situation where she thinks she's about to lose her son mm. and so she goes from life looks like it's getting back together to everything falling apart and then through a series of accidents um she goes on this trip to try and you know recover her son harry and she ends up teaming up with these three pensioners from her um from the care home where she worked <laughs> who've who've all escaped and are going on a trip too for their own reasons so, you know, the tagline is three escaped pensioners, one single mother, a road trip to rescue her son. So, but it is this story about, you know, all of these people going on this journey with the idea of saving something, yeah. but them all being dependent on each other. And so there's a lot of, um, you know, themes of, uh, you know, kindness and, and, and the opposites of that. And um, I, I, it's, I write uplifting endings. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, for me, the story comes to a lovely resolution. And there is, again, a romantic subplot um, with an unlikely hero along the way. Um, but it has it has sort of has these themes about kindness and cooperation and, um, you know, what people, the extents that people will go to for each other, which yeah. I think is a really nice thing to write about. Oh, that's really gorgeous. Try like... not to spoiler it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it sounds beautiful. And I just wanted to add that on your website, it actually says that her signature style features a lush sense of place, rich plot, emotive heart, and a body and soul odyssey for her characters. Wow. <laughs> That's what I aim for. Yeah. Uh, I, um, I, I love putting something in a setting, uh, you yeah. know, that, that bringing that setting into the story. Mm. Um, so in this case, you know, it's a road trip through the south yeah. of, of um, the States, yeah. um, which is a very interesting place to go. It you is. know, it, you, you go from coastal LA to the desert of Arizona and through Texas, and then you get into this much more lush, almost European looking um, as you get into Tennessee and those more Eastern states. Yeah. Um, and then all the way to New York, which is just the ultimate metropolis. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, well, I love bringing those things in, but I like a lot of things to happen in my stories. So, yeah, um, yeah I was the characters doing a lot of things and then um, them being moved a long way from where they were at the beginning of the story. Yeah. Oh, that sounds fantastic. So, Saving yeah. You, you're doing a little book tour around Brisbane in February. Yes. Um, which just looks fantastic and um and i'm so i'm going to be at a lot of libraries you yes. are going to be in a lot of libraries not in the sunshine coast but anyway <laughs> yes, yes. i will be at the fraser coast though i will be up in harvey bay on uh there's a it's a wednesday i think yeah. it's, it might be the 22nd of february 
Excellent. Well, all the dates are on your website, so they people are. should definitely go and check it out. And if you've got some time, go. <laughs> and um, of course, we're doing um, the a romantic rendezvous, which is the Australian yep. Romance Readers Association. Um, so you're doing Brisbane and Melbourne in March, aren't you? Yes, Brisbane on the uh, the twenty third. Yep. of March yep. and then Melbourne on the 30th yep excellent so I'm just doing Brisbane guys but you should definitely come along and uh if anyone does want to come along you should definitely go and check out my Facebook page Write with love because we have a free ticket to give away which is awesome so you can come and right. I think you've got something a little bit special that you've got to offer people that... yeah so if anyone is coming to Ara in either Brisbane or Melbourne um, I've got a special price on my on the Paris wedding and the horseman um, so I've got eight dollar um, copies of those that you can pre-order uh, and pick up on those days yeah. uh, if you can't come to either of those events I also do have those special Special prices on my website shop um, but there's you no know, postage to add with there so yeah. come to Arrow you know, and, avoid yeah. the postage. <laughs> and get it signed and of course we have a giveaway because we love doing giveaways yeah. <laughs> so on the Write With Love Facebook page you're being very generous and you're going to offer a signed autographed yep. paper bag of saving you so that's very yep. exciting yay yep. so um, whoever you would like it or however you'd like it yes. yeah so absolutely do enter that's it so it's just the right with love facebook page you go and google that one and um you'll be able to see the conditions on that so you should definitely do that it'll be running for just a, a week or two and so what are you doing now apart from your book tours what are you working on <laughs> Right, well, I, I am working on my next book. So the working title, and I say working title because these often change, <laughs> working title is um, 26 Letters. So it's about a woman who receives a whole stack of letters from her mother, but many, many years after her mother has died. Mm -hmm. um, and due to a clerical error, um, she didn't receive them. So she was meant to have one every year, uh, sort of from, from when her mother had passed away. But then she suddenly gets these letters um, many years later and they're incomplete and, and it's sort of, uh, it's a real shock to the system uh, because she can barely remember her mother. Wow. So it's, it's then the story is about the journey that results and it takes her all the way from the Gold Coast on Australia where she, in Australia where she lives to this little English village where her mother came from. And there's, you know, there's some secrets and some big surprises in there, of course. Um, and I guess it's really about the idea of can you really know somebody that you can't remember mm. even, you know, when they're someone as significant to you as a mother. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. And I'm, I'm about 10,000 words short of the end of the first draft. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I'm hoping that that one might be out next year. Yeah. So it might be my 2020 book. Um, but, yeah, I've got to finish it first and then <laughs> <laughs> do all of the normal things, all the editing and all yes, that sort of stuff. Yes, all the good stuff yeah. we have to do. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. So where can we find you online and keep up with everything that you do? Yep, so my website is charlottenash.net, uh, and it's a one-stop shop. If you want to be on the newsletter, all the details are there and also the links to all the social media places. I'm most often on Facebook and Instagram, mm. uh, but you can find all of those links there or whatever you prefer. Yeah. Well, that was fabulous. Thank you so much for joining me today, Charlotte. I really appreciate it. You're very it. welcome, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Jump onto my website, sarahwilliamsauthor.com and join my mailing list to receive a free preview of my books and lots of other inspiration. If you like the show and want it to continue, you can become a sponsor for just a couple of dollars a month. Go to patreon.com forward slash Sarah Williams author. And remember to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a review of the podcast. I'll be back next week with another loved up episode. Bye.